What's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody? What's up, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you are listening to this or watching it? How are you? Um, look who we got here. We got Forrest Valkai here. Ah, hey! Oh, my goodness. How about that? Um, you might not know him. If you do, uh, then, then you're excited. You're like, oh, hell yeah. I really am excited to see Forrest Valkai. If you don't know him, you should be following Forrest. Uh, Forrest... Pretend like nobody here knows who you are and tell them uh, who you are and what your background is, how you got started making content and finding yourself teaching people about evolution and uh, arguing with theists and stuff about God. Just that little bit, huh? Just, Just that, that little, little bit of the story. <laughs> Real quick, I'm timing you. You've got three minutes and cool. go. <laughs> yeah, hi. So my name is Forrest Valkai. Uh, I'm a biologist and an educator. Um, I, uh, I specialize in evolutionary biology and bioanthropology. Um, I hold undergraduate degrees in education, biology, integrative biology with an organismic concentration and liberal arts, which is more damn biology credits that I just applied to that. Uh, and I'm currently a, a master's student studying bioanthropology, which is the evolution and biology of humans specifically. Uh, I'm in my last semester of that doing a thesis on paleoecological reconstruction through stable isotope analysis. And I can talk about that. What the, what the hell did hours. you say? <laughs> paleoecological reconstruction through stable isotope analysis. So I'm using these, I'm grinding up deer teeth to get st the isotopes uh, of carbon and oxygen out of their tooth enamel in order to tell what kind of plants they were eating and what the climate was like when they were alive <laughs> in a 1.5 million year old archaeological site in Ubadi, Israel, which is where we find the oldest bones of Homo erectus outside of Africa, not counting like some of the oldest Homo erectus bones, um, in order to understand better the selection pressures that were acting on humans so we can understand why we evolved the way we did. That's what my research is in. I just um, hear this and I'm like, it's so funny that a big part of your life is like, is like arguing with people about what you do who have, who have never cracked a book on it. <laughs> and you're like talking about grinding up teeth to see what kind yeah. of like. <laughs> well, it's, it's frustrating because like the, the big thing that I find is that when people are indoctrinated with creationism, they, they really, really have like tried to learn the things but the the resources that they have are so bogus that yeah. they're taught. You know, I, I was I was doing a, a show yesterday um, with a, a Gutsit Gibbon, uh, who is also another YouTuber. She's a, a PhD student in bio in bioanthropology, um, and she's fantastic, way smarter than I'll ever be. You should check her out. Um, but uh, she uh, was talking about her religious upbringing, and you know, now she is studying human evolution. That's her 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 PhD program. But when she was a kid. She wasn't allowed to learn it. She went to this Christian private school and they had like hand me down public school textbooks. And they just were like, don't read chapter four because it's got evolution. And you just skip that over. And one day she just sat down and you know she kind of locked herself in the pantry and opened up this book. And like she remembered her teacher saying they don't have any fossils. And it's like, here's the list of fossils. And she's oh. there like, you know, well, Homo habilis, that's actually just an ape creature that isn't real. And it's, they just made that up. And she's like, why would they name something that isn't real? And she looks it up in the textbook and, oh, fuck, here's everything we know about. Wow. And like, that's the biggest thing is when we, when I, you know, do debates about evolution, um, about the age of the earth, about climate change, about whatever it is, the people who are, you know, big, heavy deniers in this area, generally, it's not that they're stupid. They haven't, you know, like just they don't know anything they've been told the wrong thing so consistently that they think there isn't a right answer um and that's, that's a such a nice of way of putting this. it that's such a nice way of putting it because i like yeah. you say that you're like they're not stupid and i'm like i've watched a lot of these clips of you talking to these people for us and you are being generous by <laughs> with saying well, they're not stupid people well, it's, but it's like, they've been but, lied to you know yeah I, I yeah get, there's, there's I some compassion <laughs> When I hear you put it that way, I'm like, okay, all right. But that's why you're so good at this because you actually you you have such um, empathy and compassion and and patience. And I also think that I it, it must come from like you have a teaching background too. Like you, you do you still teach or were you once yeah. a teacher and are no longer? So I've been doing for the past about probably 10 years, I've been doing this thing called informal education, where rather than just having one set classroom with these kids and I teach these things and blah, 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 um, schools, libraries, colleges, universities, whatever, 
will hire me to come out and do either a one-time workshop or like a class series over the course of a semester or two or a big stage show for all ages, all sizes. I've performed for pre-K. I've performed all the way up to junior college level. I've performed for one or two kids. I've performed for audiences of a thousand people, whatever it takes to get people excited about science. You're um, doing like and- Valkai the science guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so like, I do have long contracts where like a homeschool group or something like that will will contract with me. And I'll, you know, have like, a will be there every week for the semester. And I'll work with those kids for years at a time and like follow them through their high school career and be like the science enrichment program that's consistent with them. I do that stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's awesome. But generally speaking, I'm around a diverse group of people who have never seen me before, who, you know, I have no idea what their background is. And I have to make something that's that's palatable for all of them, that they can all understand. And I have to be able to field questions from everybody from all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of levels of understanding. And I've been doing that for about a decade. So that's definitely made me a, a more resourceful educator. And it's made me able to see like, OK, I can tell where this line of thinking is going. Let's let's go there before you do so that we can kind of head this off and not have to go through the bullshit, you know, Um but yeah, that's that's what got me into all this, man, is that I grew up in Oklahoma in the buckle of the Bible Belt where, you know, uh, uh, scientist is a dirty word, just like Democrat. And uh, that uh, we have to you know fight against uh, the, the, the idea that there's this secret cabal of people at every university trying to indoctrinate children to not believe in God and to change their ways over to whatever Satan thing. I've been I've been called all sorts of weird stuff, dude. One time I got accused of being a robot sent by the government to turn people away from Jesus and bring about the apocalypse. And I was like, don't spoil the ending. But like, that's it's, it's <laughs> like, it's crazy, dude. It's, that's, that's what got me into this. I just want to make I like better. I like the idea that like to to an undereducated person. And again, that's what I, I guess I'll say instead of calling them stupid because or, or a miseducated person, a miseducated person or an under, undereducated person through no fault of their own. They've just been given bad information, as you've said. But I like the idea that to a person like that, listening to you is so the the words coming out of your mouth are so complex and so much more multisyllabic than words that they're used to, that the only possible rational explanation is this guy must be a robot. And that that actually makes sense at that point in their brain is like, you can't possibly be a human person speaking the way that you're speaking. And it's even when you I just try said- to av- I try to avoid that kind of language for that reason, because I don't want to like be, I don't want to feed into that bullshit of like how we're this elitist, you know, like put upon, like I am so much more educated, you know, like there's so yeah, but, much shit that I don't know. <laughs> but say that thing one more time that you're studying, paleo syllabus, just say that one more time. Paleoecological reconstruction through stable isotope analysis is what I'm doing. <laughs> Not okay, that crazy. Actually, okay. No, I, okay. Pa- paleological reconstruction. Paleoecological. Paleoecological reconstruction through stable isotope analysis. Yeah, exactly. So, so you have you have yeah, you got it perfect. So okay. you have the ecology of a region, like the uh-huh. all the life and all the all the biotic and abiotic factors living there, and we're doing it in the past. So it's paleoecology, mm-hmm. and we're reconstructing because we can't see what it is, so we have to rebuild okay. it. And through stable isotope analysis, so we have these different isotopes of carbon and oxygen, and we have the radioactive ones that we use for like dating. We're using stable ones that persist forever, pretty much. Um, and we're analyzing the ratios to see what the climate and what the plant life was like. And I can go into that if you want, but it's, it's, there's a whole reason why that works and it's really fucking cool. But sounds exactly about. like something a robot would say. Yeah, I mean, suspiciously. <laughs> you know what? I, the, I'm starting to think that you're a government. Right, right. You might be on the robot. Me. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, that's fantastic. Um, so I wonder, uh, so, so, uh, oh, before we get, into the main meat of the conversation. How do you start uh, making content? Is that just sort of a hop, skip, and a jump from doing shows and being Val yeah. the science guy? Like, do you just go like, oh, well, I might as well try to like, does it start with YouTube and then TikTok comes along? Like, how long have you been in that game? Backwards, backwards, yeah. Backwards. So I, uh, okay. um, I was doing stage shows for a long time. I worked for several different education companies doing this. Um, I was constantly getting reprimanded because the these are companies, they're a business. And so like, I got kicked out of a school once because the kids asked me, 
how stars work. And I explained to them how stars work. And I talked about stellar nuclear synthesis and like what that's all about. And then I got a phone call the next day, very upset that like, my kids are telling me that they came from stars and not Jesus and their parents are really mad and we don't want you back here anymore. And I was like, ah, oh, that was a Christian school, wasn't it? Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and uh, so like that kind of thing was a consistent issue. And I had, you know, t- people telling me don't teach evolution and don't teach about the age of the earth and don't teach about, you know, the evolution of skin color because that's a racial topic and we're going to piss people off. And I was like, I'm going to teach science. I don't care. Like what? And so eventually I started the company of a renegade science teacher as this brand to say, I'm going to teach real science. However, I want to teach it. I'm going to teach the science that I know matters. I have so many stories of, you know, of real serious science lessons, having a major visible impact on a kid's life right in front of my eyes. I want to do that more and more. Um, And so I started doing stage shows on my own, you know, building my own brand. And just as I started to gain some momentum and actually start to make this work, uh, COVID hit. And so I, uh, in, it was June, 2020, I made the first, uh, my first TikTok video, which was about the evolution of human skin color and how there is no such thing as race, biologically speaking. Um, and that first video took off like crazy. And I was just like, this is what I'm I'm supposed to be doing this. Um, and then I moved. So so I, I want to posit a theory here though, that, that, you're the reason why the COVID pandemic happened because God had to shut you down. You were, if, if you anything, were, he made me stronger. This, this is the thing. My audience no, grew you were, exponentially after COVID. Well, it might not have worked, but you were <laughs> you were swaying too much. You were you were catching too much steam with your live show, and God tried yeah. to shut you down. But the devil works harder and it's, gave it's, you a, a boost on in the algorithm. One of God's many many failures, absolutely. <laughs> many many failures oh i could go through so many of them if you believe in the bible stories there are so many failures i mean it's kind of like that's like kind of all there is yeah you know that he never got anything right he is yet to get something right yeah i did a, an episode recently about satan and just about the devil and about like the just because like satanic panic has sort of been back in the news and just yeah. sort of about the idea that it's like this character just narratively and like uh, in a literary sense, doesn't make a lot of like a, a lot of sense as a villain. First of all, he's like he's he's um, uh, protagonistic. Like he moves the the plot forward. God is the antagonist of the book. Like God is like constantly trying to stop the plot from moving forward, and yep. Satan's the one who always like pushes it through and like pushes yep. like keeps things moving forward the way that they need to move forward. And second of all, like if God is in control of everything, if God is the one who's like the designer and the architect, like then God made it. God yeah. made Satan. Like God created the system that necessitated yeah. the villain. So and God he's omnipotent. Is... So he knew what Satan was going to do that, that then make him mad and he would have to go correct it. Like, right. is this just a, is he just bored? He wanted a, something to play with? Like, what is that? Like, it uh, kills and me. And my, my favorite thing is that if Satan has free will, which is what they always go to when you go, like you, I've heard you ask this question to be- yeah. believers before. Like if God knows what I'm going to do and he created me and he knows how my brain works and which choices I'm going to make. Isn't he responsible for my choices? And they're like, Oh, but do we have free? He's giving you free will. So even though he knows Mm -hmm. what you're going to do, he's allowing you to, to do what it is that you're, you know, whatever, however that works, however you want to untangle that brain, knot. (laughs) But, uh, I talked about just like Satan's like Satan's, a a, uh, ostensibly a smart, being like a, a, so, yeah. yeah like an intel like a, a, this this is a being that has a lot of information that none of us have like at least yeah. has information about like how the eternities are structured and like and uh, you know the power of god and how it works and all this stuff like if he has agency to act on his own and to act in his own way surely he's aware of the role that he's playing in the grand design mm-hmm. and all he would have to do to fuck it all up is be like i'm not playing anymore I'm yeah. just, I'm just not going to participate. Which, I, which one of the two put out a book trashing the other one? Who's the real adult <laughs> in the room here? You know what I mean? Like it, it sounds like he's already over it. Yeah, I love, I love that. Who's the real adult here? <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, okay, I, still have I love all the time. Uh, who asked? I'm, I'm sorry. I just, just be. I, I still have people who tell me that like any bad thing is Satan's fault, and like that, that you know, if if. If, you know, people are raped and murdered and hurt and all these things, well, that's Satan at work and Satan's guiding these things. I'm like, so Satan's more powerful than God then? And they were like, no, of course not. I'm like, well, if someone was hurting your children, would you stop them? Yeah, of course. Right. So either God wants these people to be hurt so we can't blame Satan or Satan is more powerful than God so we should be worshiping him, right? And like, it's, a, it's, a, it's just 
the whole problem of evil falls apart, especially when you add in a new actor. Well, also, they have no problem attributing bad things to God all the time, too. Like, just oh, like, yeah. a, like a tsunami hits a town and it's like, oh, well, you know, like that was a very that that town had a lot of like gambling and iniquity. in it. It's like so, the gays. It also had a lot of children in it just kind of like <laughs> playing hopscotch. Like, I, like what, are, what, what are you talking about? But were they about? playing hopscotch in a homosexual way? That's what really needs to be. <laughs> outside had. of a drag story hour. Right. Uh, yeah. Like they it, played hopscotch outside of wedlock and now they they are drowned. Yeah, and pretty much like all the bad things, like all the mass murder events that happen in the Bible are God. Yeah. So it's 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 kind of yeah, it's weird. Like if it if Jeffrey Dahmer happens, they'll be like, well, Jeffrey Dahmer was possessed by the devil to do what he did. Except for a lot of Christians also are, are the, their new hot take is that Jeffrey Dahmer accepted Jesus when he went to prison, so right, he's, right. he's in heaven now. Yeah, <laughs> which is great. I don't um, live in that world. Yeah, but but they'll say something like that. But it's like, OK, but you you give God credit for terrible stuff all the time. I, I've heard people on on the show that you do uh, that you're a, a, a host on occasionally the atheist experience, ta you know, talking about monkeypox and AIDS being a curse on yeah. on uh, gay people, That's even though fun. not only it's not I'm only so gay sorry. people that that get AIDS or monkeypox. Yeah. I apologize. I've had, I've been fucking with it gently, and it's just this one sticking straight up, and I can't stop looking at it. Continue, continue That's talking you, about monkey box. You, Absolutely, you, you've got a sort of iconic thing going on, like a Conan O'Brien thing going on with your hair, where <laughs> like like the more famous you get, the more hard it's going to be for you to change that because it's such a trademark it's, thing. You it's know, it's a mess. It's just you, this curly mess. And no, it's a very it's a it's a it's a Forrest Valkyrie trademark thing at this point it's kind of like me and my mustache it's like it'll be a yeah, yeah. it'll be a problem if i shave my mustache i think for <laughs> for the audience absolutely you know? i couldn't imagine without it it looks good on you it's 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 it's, it's, it's <laughs> monumental thank you i can't imagine you without the uh the the curly quaff insane curls yeah uh so so that that story went differently than I thought. I, I guess I always assumed that you started out on YouTube and that maybe you were teaching while making YouTube videos and then TikTok. Like, so I, that actually gives me hope. The idea that someone found success on YouTube after TikTok, because yeah. that's, I feel like that's what I'm, I'm trying to pivot into as mm. TikTok becomes a, a more and more difficult place to deal with their content moderation process. And so yeah. it's nice to see someone finding uh success um, over there. I'm about a, like maybe a week away from leaving Twitter and I'm maybe a, a couple of months away for depending on how things go uh, in the upcoming months. Like I am on the fence with TikTok anymore. Cause like YouTube, I, I have order of magnitude, less people watching over there and, and I'm able to make a living and I'm able to like actually teach really complex topics. And I know that they're getting across and I'm able to like have real discussions with people. Whereas with TikTok, it's, you know, insanity sells and the more wrong something is the more it's going to get picked up by the algorithm because you got people arguing about it rather than it being a good video you know what i mean yeah yeah that's such a good point and such a disappointing um point as well i feel like i would be so ready to leave if i were able to just get like a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube if i could get yeah. like if i could just get 10% of my audience on TikTok to come over to YouTube, I'd be like, great, we don't need to do TikTok anymore. And TikTok, yeah. it's, a, it's a mess. And uh, it's so hard getting in touch with them and trying to explain to anyone who works there mm. the problems that they surely are already aware of. And it's, and you know, so it makes you kind of go like, what, what incentive would they have to fix it at this point? Surely they're already aware that yeah. Every community guideline violation I've ever gotten was erroneous and wasn't yep. accurate. And I've I've won every appeal I've ever made, yet they still have a record of all of them. They're like, you've yeah, had 30 they community still punish guidelines. You for them. Yeah, and I'm like, but that but you sh fix this in your system. Yeah, like exactly. I won. You you reviewed <laughs> it and and went, you never mind, you didn't do that. Um mm -hmm. <clears throat> But whatever, whatever, we can talk about uh, the woes of being a content creator another day. The 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 truth Let's of the fact about the, our wonderful jobs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like the truth <laughs> of the matter is, like both of our lives are immeasurably different because of the uh, uh, tool that is um, social media and absolutely you know, uh, video sharing and yeah, and the fact that we have access to video editing tools and cameras are so ex accessible these days yeah. to the layperson. So. Uh, yeah, we could be doing something uh, far less interesting with our lives. Um, <laughs> how how do you become 
a, a part-time guest on the atheist experience, which is a show that's been going on for like 20 years now. Yeah. Uh, my brother used to host a podcast called Mormon expression. That was for people who have left the Mormon faith. I was raised LDS and uh, Matt Dillahunty was a, a guest of his like, and this was like, Oh geez, over 10 years ago. But yeah. the atheist experience is like one of the OG atheist yeah. call in podcast shows. How did you come to be one, uh, one of their hosts? Uh, so I was on a a show with um, there's a, a guy named Dave Warnock who's a, another popular uh, uh, atheist speaker, yeah, um, and uh, a young lady named Genevieve as well who's a you know she's she's an up and coming star I've, in that community. I've you been know on her? their show. Yeah. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, yeah. the that GD show, right? Yeah, I've been on that yep. show, yeah. Uh, so uh, I was doing a live stream a little while ago, just one of my science Sundays, just you know answering questions, um, and all of a sudden I got tagged like five times in videos. Uh, and my phone's buzzing like crazy. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I got to put this on silent or whatever. And Genevieve pops up in the comments and says, I'm so sorry. That was me. I just wanted you to see my stuff. I think you might like it. And I check her out and sure enough, she's making phenomenal points. She's talking, you know, it's a really great game. And so she was like one of the first atheist accounts I follow on TikTok. Cause at that time I was still like, Oh, people might see who I'm following and judge me. I don't know if I should be too outspoken <laughs> yet. That's yet. And, and, uh, that I immediately followed her captain dad pool, uh, I blame Bill, uh, Eve was framed, um, uh, 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 Lilith unleashed. Like I just started going down the line, like find all these people. Um, and so Genevieve introduces me to Dave. They have me on their show. Uh, and Dave is like, I know some people that you should meet. Uh, and next thing, uh, I'm on, uh, truth wanted with objectively Dan. And then we went from there to talk heathen. Uh, and then they were like, all right, you're doing great. We'll put you on AXP. Um, and very quickly, uh, I became in, in high demand there. And I don't know why they just liked what I did. And so they they asked me if I can do more and more. And I, we settled on one show a month for, for the most part. Uh, and they recently just had me down to Austin so we could do a live show as well, which was fantastically fun. Um, so yeah, just it was a, a, a match made in heaven for lack of a better word. It was just a thing that you know really worked out for both of us because I've been listening to the atheist experience. Gosh, I remember sitting at my one of my, you know, earlier jobs, I was working at a science museum as a STEM educator, and I was just sitting there just building motors all day for eight hours so I could teach a class with them later on and just sitting there building boat and I have AXP in my ear like someday, man, someday I'm going to be on that. That sounds like a, oh, <laughs> so it's just it's a dream come true. How cool. Um, and we went from there. Now we've got a new show uh, on the line network on, on the YouTubes uh, called Skeptalk. Uh, and the line is a for-profit. So AXP is funded by the, the, the Atheist Community of Boston nonprofit organization. The line is a for-profit network of all sorts of atheist call-in shows and all sorts of other things as well. Um, and we got a new show called Skeptalk, uh, which is a, a Monday show. Um, and I'm a host on there once or twice a month as well. And that one's freaking insane. S-K-E-P-T-A-L-K? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skep and then talk like you're talking, not like TikTok. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's it's a phenomenal <laughs> show and it's the same format. You know, we just take calls and talk to people, um, but it's a little bit more relaxed. And uh, we able, we're able to get into, you know, some some real meaty conversations with people who are real fired up and don't want to take on the traditional, like you said, the OGs of, of the atheist experience. Yeah, I want to talk about I, I've like writ, I've I've gone through a bunch of videos that you've done so far with the atheist experience. And like I I've like pulled out a few examples of things that I want to talk about. But like sure. just in a general sense, I just I, it never ceases to sort of like amaze me and and also confuse and baffle me that for 20 years now, this show has had the same format, more or less, of people calling in and thinking that they're going to be the person who stumps one of the hosts that like, yeah. I've got the thing, I've got the argument you haven't heard. And what's so baffling to me is how it's, there's like one of like 10, it's like mm -hmm. one, like there's like one of 10 arguments that you just hear every time, every phone yeah. call. And it's like, and every time I'm hoping, I'm hoping as a viewer, like, please, please, please let this person have something new. And I've yeah. heard you before, like slow people down and be like, hold on. I don't mean to be rude. It's just that we get a lot of these phone calls. Is your story about to be this? And like, you tell them the story and you're like, you, uh, your, your heart stopped and you saw a white light and you went toward the light and you felt a warm presence. And you remember seeing some like family members and then you were outside of your body and you saw them doing CPR on your body. And then you came back into your body and you woke up. Is that your story? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, cool. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be rude. It's just, we've heard that story about uh, 500 times. And I just wanted to just check with you that that's your cool, yeah. cool story. Awesome story. Here's why it doesn't, it still doesn't explain 
all yep. of these other things. And like, interesting, interesting, like fascinating that so many right. different people have this same shared experience in this moment. That does not prove that the God of the Bible is God and created the universe. That does not prove that we know the destination of the afterlife. If there is an afterlife, mm-hmm. that does not prove that there is something beyond like the there might be like an in-between layer of like DMT that's going into your brain as your heart is stopped and as your brain waves have ceased. And a lot of people experience that in the same way. We know that we have people who smoke DMT and have similar experiences that they can report. So like fascinating, great story. We also know that like all of their experiences happen to line up perfectly with their already the religious things that they already accepted and believed in. So like, None of the Muslims that do DMT and have these experiences have a Christian experience like you had and vice versa. It's kind of weird, right? Like, Yeah. <laughs> weird how that works. Yeah. But it's almost like your brain did the thing. But it's just it's just fascinating to me how people know ostensibly no seemingly you would think know what the show is like they're watching the show and sometimes and a lot of times they call in and say, I've watched this show a lot. I've I'm, I've I've been watching the show for a while. I listen to you guys. And I, and I'm like, man, so you've been watching this show, maybe three, four, five, 10, 20 episodes. I don't know how many episodes. And you thought, I know, I know what they haven't heard yet. And you call in and you quote a Bible verse. Yeah. <laughs> like you call yeah. in and you're like, have you guys heard Romans five? And it's like, mm-hmm. it's like, how do you, how do you not know that yeah. calling in and saying in the Bible, it says the Bible is true is is like 90 percent of what we get on this show yeah (laughs) it it sucks because like that's it's it's just you know what we're talking about earlier is that that's the resource that they've had for their education is that this is authoritative if you say it this way nobody could argue with it because i certainly can't and you certainly can't so if you tell it to them then they certainly can't either um and like this is a thing we see when whenever we're talking about you know uh, skepticism versus dogma whether it be science atheism uh, just skepticism in general is when we talk to a person coming from a dogmatic framework, they can't get past that, but it says it in the thing. It says this, and my pastor said, and God said, and this says, and it's like, I don't care. Why do you believe that? You know, what? Don't tell me who else said it. And then, you know, the inevitable, well then, so who do you worship that said that I'm wrong? It's like, I don't worship anybody. I came to this conclusion all on my own. How can you come to a conclusion on your own? What is that all about? What book did Darwin tell you I'm wrong? Cause that's not right. Like it's, it's this is the, the de- part of deconstruction is telling people that it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to come up with your own ideas. And if you're wrong, change your mind. Like that's a major part of deconstruction that people don't think is possible. Yeah, I think that that that's that's what's so interesting to watch is, and you're so right that it's it it's the only frame of reference for information or authoritative truth that they have, and the concept that 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 source does not have authority for other people and does yeah. not have the same weight for other people that it has for them. It's weird to see how foreign of a concept that is that they're like, well, it says it right here. It yeah, says it in yeah. the book. like, and, yeah. and they're presupposing that everyone in the room all agrees, that we all are on the same page, that the Bible is an authoritative book. Uh, what else from, would it be? Yeah. That we're, but no one ever establishes that. No one ever calls in and says, first of all, before I start, we all agree that the Bible was uh, written and inspired by the mouth of God, the, the mouth of God spoke through men to write. We all agree with uh, on that, yeah, right? Yeah. And that the, the book course, is infallible yeah. and perfect. Everyone's on the same page. Cool. Well, it says right. They don't even start with that. It's assumed because then yeah. they go, well, it says right here, Genesis. It yeah. starts in the beginning. God created like it's right there. And you're like, how do you how are you calling into this show and not understanding that? You're calling in saying it says right here, Harry Potter went to Hogwarts. He went platform nine and three quarters. It's right here. And this is a show where we're saying we're trying to convince you that Harry Potter is a work of fiction and that it is a it, that it is not an authoritative book of truth. That is the point of our show. Right. And you're calling in saying, but it says right here in the book. And I I even understanding what you're saying that like this is the only source that many people have had. I still am like, how do you not get that the the people you're calling, their whole thing is that it's just a book. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you yeah. not understand that? We had, we had that last, I think it was last week, if I remember right. We had this guy call in. It was towards the end of the show. Um, and uh, he was talking about you know, this exact same thing. You know, well, I know that the Bible is true because it's authoritative and it's true and it, it says it right here. And we talked about, you know, well, we all know that Islam is true, right? And he's like, no, of course not. I was like, but it says in the Quran about all these say it explains this out and like it says it right there and he says yeah but that's not ordained by god that's not an authoritative text he's like yeah but you see they said it is and it says it right there and finally after doing that for like five minutes the guy finally says no anybody can write anything in a book and say it's true and i was like yes you got it exactly and then the next thing out of his mouth is but the bible really is though like damn it we're, we're so close I think I heard that clip and you you're really good at this. Um, and I'm learning a lot from watching you because you're re- you you ask questions. You don't tell people you ask questions and you lead them down the path that you want them to come to on their So, so that they can come to it on their own because then you say, like, well, like, where were you raised? You know, and then it's like, OK, so where you were raised, uh, Christianity was the predominant religion. So were you raised Christian? Yeah. OK, so do you think that your internal um feeling that the bible is an authoritative book could be influenced by your like or like why do you think that people in in the middle east predominantly uh favor the quran over the bible like what what do you think leads that oh it's cultural it's because of where they were raised and what that's what they okay yes yes so you you know how that works you know that the water that you're swimming in that you're born into you don't necessarily choose influences the way that you see the world so could it be that you're having the same you know like yeah and and you lead them down this path and they can even go with you every single step of the way agreeing and then when it comes to finally just being able to say so if this, then this, then. <laughs> right. So that means that I have the right one, right? That's it. I was yeah. lucky enough to be born in the right family, in the right part <laughs> of the right country, with the right version of the right religion, in the right time period. So it's interpreted in the right way, with the right translation of the right version of the right book. That Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's, it's, it's so hard when you can get somebody right there up to the point and they still say, and that's why everybody else is wrong. It's it's yeah. I want to read something to you that I grabbed from Reddit. Um, in while well, I was going through prep for this episode, and it's just two people arguing in the comments section about you know about what we're talking about. And I got this from Confidently Incorrect, which is a fun uh, subreddit. Uh, but this person says God did not create evil. Evil was created by Satan. God is good. Good cannot create evil. Only evil creates evil. You need to study the scriptures more. The other person says, LOL, I need to study. Okay, are you sure God didn't create evil? Because maybe you are the one who needs to study. The theist responds, trust me, I know the scriptures. Went to church every Sunday. God did not create evil. This person responds, Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Theist responds, you're taking that out of context. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. It's It's like so perfect. It's just like the context thing kills me. (laughs) It's it's absolutely maddening. Because like you can present with something like that. Like, what is the that was a full ass quote? There's unless the previous verse, unless the previous verse is I'm about to say some bullshit that ain't true right now, then that (laughs) there's no reason for that to say content. It's the same thing we talk about slavery or 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 rape or anything in the gen. uh, You you can go look at the book of Exodus, it tells you where to buy slaves, how much to pay for the slaves, how to beat the slaves. Like, and people say, Oh, you're taking that out of context. Okay, give me the context exactly <laughs> when is it okay to own human beings as property well it was this hebrew thing and it was this is like nobody's talking about that it says right here they are your property when is that okay and if your answer is anything aside from never then you're the asshole here and you have to realize like this is what bothers me so much this is you know something that, that uh, you know uh, hitchens and so many others before him said all the time is that you know if you want in a normal everyday universe Good people do good things and bad people do bad things. And that's the way it is. But if you want good people to do and believe bad things, you need religion. And if you want a good, honest, normal, everyday person to condone slavery, all you have to do is put in the Bible and they'll defend it to their dying breath. 
Like it, it's 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 not hard. So I I'm can glad any random scientist and find something shitty about him and say this guy was an asshole. But he, it's it's fine because I'm not dogmatic. Sorry, go on. What were you saying? No, I th that's an important point that like it doesn't mean that science is wrong if I can find a bad scientist who did yeah. a bad thing. P people do good and bad things all the time. Like that, every one of us is is made up of uh, good and bad things that we have done, and good and bad decisions that we have made, and Precisely. and uh, helpful and harmful things that we have done. Um, but I do want to talk about like the slavery thing. That's that's one of the people that you talk to that I want to talk about. But mm -hmm. I, there's a few guests and interactions that you've had on the show that I want to break down. But I want to talk some broader questions before we get there. One and I'm going to sort of take the position. I know I have people in my audience who are theists and who mm -hmm. are um, believers who are trying. I, I have a lot of like progressive believers and people who are like very um, who advocate for LGBTQIA plus people and who um, are, are progressive in their political ideals, but who still attend church and believe in God and find prayer and a belief in a higher power useful in their lives. And I want to make sure that when I make content like this, like I, this is episode 139 of this podcast, and I still have not done an episode on atheism. I've talked about, <laughs> um, uh, you know, re restructuring a relationship with God with a person who left Mormonism and then had to refigure out what their relationship to God was. I've talked about Satan. I've talked about the idea of Satan and how I it think, at least in the context of the Bible, it's a weird concept. And I've talked about this issue in tangential ways, but I've never just directly head on talked about it with a guest. So I uh, want to sort of be the first one to do it. <laughs> that sounds <yeah>. great. <laughs> I want to talk about like from their perspective, questions that I hear from people a lot are things like why proselytize for atheism? Like why, yeah. if you don't believe in God and if you don't buy the truth claims of, of all these religions, what's it to you? Like what, why are you out here talking shit on the thing that I believe in. Why can't you just leave it alone? Why can't you just let me have my thing? Why do what you're doing? Right. Uh, so I have no problem whatsoever. If somebody wants to believe in whatever religion, whatever, you know, uh, 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 God, whatever folklore, whatever it may be privately in their own home, they believe this thing and it, it causes them to do that. that. That's not an issue. They're free to do that. I'm still going to try to talk about you know uh, other stuff because I think it's important that we have people getting away from these ideas and I'll get to why here in a second but like mm -hmm. as long as it's just a private thing for you I'm not coming to your door I'm not going door to door knocking and say have you heard the good news about atheism you know I'm not doing any of that um mm -hmm. we're talking to people who want to talk to us and want to try to convert us and try to and and you know that's something that we want to participate in and the reason for that is because beliefs inform actions uh, when you believe something, you're going to act based on those beliefs. And if you believe that homosexuality is a sin and, and it hurts society and it's this terrible, evil thing, you're going to vote to take away the rights from homosexuals. If you believe that women need to be in a subservient position and need to only be there to head the household while the man goes out and does their, I suppose you say, uh, support the household, man is a head out, whatever it is, um, then you're that's how you're going to participate in this society. You're going to put women down. You're not going to take them seriously. You're not going to listen to them. You're going to diminutize their problems and their experiences in favor of a man's experiences. If you believe that there's only two genders that are perfectly aligned with biological sex and that it's these two exclusive categories that are immutable and, and, and forever because that's what it says, then you're going to ignore the plights of all sorts of non-binary, non-gender conforming trans people all over the world. And you're going to push them into boxes that they don't want to be in. And that hurts them and their personality and their psyche and their experience in life. Um, it makes life actively worse for everybody when you don't take other people and other ideas and other cultures and other you know, every all these things seriously and when you don't live you know at, to, at risk of sounding quite condescending if you don't live in a reality where you change your mind based on new information that's it's so important and so like that's the main focus of this thing is that i i am an anti-theist atheist i think that not only are these beliefs untrue but they're also corrosive to society um and so i'm that that's something that i think is really important but again I'm not out here trying to shove it in your face. If you want to have your toys at home, play with your toys all you want. Don't bring it to my house. 
Don't tell me that I have to play with the toys. Don't tell me that my family can't exist because of what your religion says. Don't try to tell me that I can or can't do X, Y, Z thing because of what makes you more comfortable. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the old phrase, that, you know, a religion is like a penis. It's very nice to have one. It's very nice to take it out and play with it at home. Don't show it to kids <laughs> and don't try to shove it down my throat. That's don't all. Don't show and it so, to kids. That's the whole thing. <laughs> And so yeah. you know, when we look at the world today, you know, in, in our here in America where we live, um, you know, around 44 percent of adults believe are, are young Earth creationists that believe that the Earth was literally just formed out of whole cloth, you know, 6000 years ago. And that within their lifetime, in the next 50 years at most, that God's going to come to Earth, the clouds are going to part and Armageddon's going to happen. The whole world's going to end. So you ask yourself, if you move into a new house today. And the carpet is just, you know, nasty and it's there. It's, it's, it's being torn up. And the landlord says, hey, we're, we're actually going to replace the carpet next week. Are you going to work hard to take care of it, to clean it up, to do anything? Or are you going to say, fuck it, it's going to be gone in a week anyway. If you're an evangelical and you believe that Armageddon's coming in the next 50 years maximum, what are you going to do about climate change? What are you going to do about racial injustice? What are you going to do about poverty? What are you going to do to make this world better if you think it's going to end tomorrow? I wouldn't do shit. And so, like, that's that's the whole thing with this. In fact, in in fact, you might be wanting to usher in the apocalypse. Absolutely. Quicker. You, you are might want to make it worse. And yeah. so, like, that's that's the whole thing is that, you know, when when we're looking at these religions, I, as I, I can't stress it enough, because so many people accuse me of trying to steal people's religions away from them. I don't care if you want to believe the thing. What I care about is how you behave in society and how you treat other human beings and how we treat this world. And if your beliefs are making you act in a bad way, like we said, if you want to make a good person believe and do horrible, hideous things, there is no way you're going to have, you know, major genocide events and 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 all these, you know, the, the major oppression of, of women and of children. There's no way you're going to have that without these dogmatic worldviews. Um, and so if we can get rid of those, yeah, I absolutely think the world will be at a better place as long as it's people's free choice to get rid of them. If they tried to outlaw religion tomorrow, I'd be the first one out there marching in the streets to stop it. But I will absolutely be fighting to get rid of it by everyone's consensus every single day of my life. Absolutely. You just did a fantastic job of laying out the exact specifics of why those beliefs are, are potentially corrosive and harmful and how they can be used in ways to harm people and to harm society. And I agree with everything you just said. Um, I feel like a lot of theists and believers get stuck and get stopped once they hear someone describing their beliefs that mean so much to them as being something that is like harmful or corrosive. Why do you think people mistake you telling them that you don't believe in their God or that you find their beliefs potentially harmful? Why do you think they mistake it as like rudeness? You hear this a lot about atheists. The atheists yeah. are just like rude, smug, arrogant, cynical yeah. people. And I think that there there is some I've 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 definitely met atheists oh, yeah. before. They're out can, there for sure. Yeah, of course. But like I also think that people just they hear someone just saying, I find your beliefs to be corrosive and dangerous mm -hmm. and harmful. And they're like, that's a rude thing to say about yeah. me and about my beliefs. Even though you just did a great job of explaining exactly what you mean by that, but they can't get past the initial hurt or what yeah. do you think is attached in the identity like the way a person identifies with their beliefs that causes them to feel like you're being rude when you say that i think there's a couple of things uh mm -hmm. is that number one you know it's important to remember just how deep these these faith connections are like these are people not usually like from birth from before they could even think they oh, yeah. were taught that this is how life is and how it's supposed to be uh for like a lot of these people this is a major part of their identity you know they are christian before they are republican before they are conservative before they are you know a, a, a white black whatever before they are a man or a woman they might say i'm a christian first um this is a deep deep part of the thing and a lot of especially, um, you know, modern evangelical Christianity that I hear about. Again, you know, I'm, I'm an outsider, so I may be misinterpreting this. But what I hear from the outside um, is that there's a lot of this idea of a, a relationship, this personal knowledge of God, this thing that is like deep connected within you, that this 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 guy who sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake and knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake that, you know, what I mean? this, this is what this is, that that's always with you forever. Um 
And so when you're attacking this belief system, you are attacking, you know, their childhood best friend, their father figure, their, 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 their love interest, their whatever. It's this thing that's so deeply connected to them that you might as well be attacking them directly. Um, well, and it's also like it, it, there's there's the magical characters that have been with them their whole life, the, the the spiritual characters that they can't really see, but that they feel. But then it's also like it's it's my dad. It's my mom. It's my grandfather. Yeah. It's my grandmother. It's my yeah. it's my aunts and uncles. It's people that I have, have all of my childhood memories with. You're calling all of us wrong and harmful and dangerous yeah. and bad people. Precisely. Exactly. And, and so it's the idea of if disassociating the religion from the person, which is very, very, very difficult to do when this is a major part of their identity. Um, and so like, it's totally understandable that they would be hurt by that and that they would be offended by it. And, and, and also the implications of that, that it, even if someone can start to wrap their head around, OK, well, these ideas, you don't like them, but you're telling me I'm never going to see my dad again. I was waiting to see him, you know, when I went to heaven and met him, you know, that, that, that meant everything to me. And you're taking, I now have to grieve a second time thinking about that. You're telling me that I'm going to die. I now have to grieve myself suddenly at 40 and like, think about my own mortality. And that's terrifying. Um, so there's all these connections um, that are very deeply emotional and very, very scary. Like it, when someone's talking about deconstruction and, and how they're going through this path, I always congratulate them on their bravery. That's a terrifying thing to do. Yes. Um and it's it, it's not you know as much as I like to I might make jokes and 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 compare it to a fairy tale. Some just a second ago I compared God to Santa Claus and and you know but like the as much as this is fun to do, it's important to remember that it's very 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 real for these folks, and they are scared of the outcome if they're wrong, um, and and they tie everything in their mind, body, and soul, so to speak, to this. Uh, so. Yeah, people. It, it, I've heard people in uh, in conversation with you on the show go to Pascal's wager and th yeah. that fear of like, like, don't you worry that like if yeah. you're wrong, you're going to hell. And, it's, and exactly. but I've, I, and I think a great response that you that I've heard on that show that you've had to that is like, well, don't you worry that if you're wrong about Islam or or mm -hmm. Judaism or Buddhism or like that you that Hinduism, you could, any of them, yeah, yeah, any any of them, you could be wrong about like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Think about all the hours of sleep you haven't lost thinking about, you know, well, yeah. what if this this random tribal religion in the heart of Africa actually has the correct hell story and I'm going to go there now, you know? And yeah. so, like, that's the, the thing is, it's just there's there's a, a, a great deal of compassion that has to come along with it because you, you you know, these people are genuinely scared and they're genuinely hurt. Um, it, It's tied deeply to them and you are separating a part of themselves away just so that they can look at it and realize that they've been scared of their own shadow this whole time. Um, and so there's, there's a lot that comes with it of, you know, the, the aggression and the hurt and the fear, and then probably some shame and some confusion and some embarrassment as well. That like, I've met so many people who have gone through deconstruction. They're like, I feel so stupid. I'm like, no, if you tell a kid that the moon's made of cheese every single week, you go to a big house where everybody sings songs about the moon being made of cheese and you tell them that only the good people in the world believe that the moon's made of cheese and all the bad people burn in the big fondue after they die, <laughs> then they're gonna believe this crazy thing and most civilized adults will believe the same thing so it's it, there's no shame in it you've been abused you have been lied to and you've been taught a horrible hideous twisted version of love to make you fear something that made you that can judge you that can you know commit uh, convict you of thought crimes like you have been abused mentally probably physically and emotionally and intellectually for years and years and years. And you are now moving past that trauma. And there's nobody to blame here because the people who abused you by teaching you this were also abused and taught this stuff. And they were doing what they thought was good. And that's another big part of the most insidious nature of religion. That's that this, why I speak out against it is that if, you know, if these people think that something is good, they're going to do it. Suicide bombers are some of the most moral people in the whole world. They're willing to die for what they think is good. They think they're doing a good thing. They're not waking up like meh, twirling their mustache. They think this is the only way to save people's eternal souls and make the world a happy, good place again. And they're willing to do something horrible to do it. Oh my gosh. That should tell you that this is a thing that's hurting people. It's twisting people to do that level of horrible shit. And they're not alone. We have people <clears throat> firebombing abortion clinics here for the I exact say that, same reason. I say that all the time to people who feel like the the, the testimony that they have of whatever religion um, they were raised in or, or were converted to 
is how they know that it's more true than other people who say they have the same test. Yes. They're like, I feel it. I feel I the way that I feel it, it's such a strong testimony of 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 spiritual truth. I feel it so deeply and personally that like it has to be true. And I always go like, do you think that you feel it more deeply than a person who straps a bomb to their chest and blows up a yeah. bus in the name? Like, do you genuinely think that you have a a deeper conviction? That you yeah. have a deeper, more personal conviction than a person who is willing to kill several people and themselves in the name of that mm -hmm. God with the, uh, with absolute conviction that they are going straight to heaven for doing so. Yep. Like, yep. Do, do you actually think if you're being honest that, that your mm -hmm. conviction is stronger than that person's? And that's what kills me is that this is, you know, something that is being fed to usually in this case, specifically young men who have, you know, nowhere else to go, who don't know what their life is going to turn into, who are finally given, you know, not only purpose and meaning, but also very clear directions and a sense of, of, of importance and, 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 you know, empowerment, like all the things that a young man wants in that point of their life. Um, I'm going to do something good for the world. And what they don't have is strong critical thinking <clears throat> skills and strong processing of consequences and an understanding of other people's cultures and a good cultural relativism. Like they don't have any of that yet, but they have the damn desire to go and do something big to make the world great. And you're going to give it to them. And it just happens to be something in hand. It's heinous. I think that that's such an interesting philosophical idea of like, is something good just because you believe it is that if you believe you're doing something good and something righteous, does that make it good that you're like, I didn't, I didn't do it because I was trying to do something bad or because I was right. trying to do something evil. I did it because I was trying to do something kind and righteous and yeah. compassionate. Therefore, it, it, and I think it's, it, I mean, I wrote down a question about niceness, like about talking about like, is it rude of you to question people's beliefs? Why do people think it's rude? And then I wrote down like a lot of these people seem to think that just speaking in a kind or calm tone makes them nice. I see people yeah. call into the show and be like, hi guys, I'm hoping we can have just a reasonable conversation. I have some questions and, and they'll go on to say something awful. They'll be like, I just think that's why women should be subservient to men. It's right there in the book. And I'm mm -hmm. hoping you guys, or they'll be like, and you know, I, I see evidence of how homosexuality is a sin. And, and, and it's yeah. not something that I have against those people. It's just, you know, and I'm like, is you saying this in a kind way, making it kind in your mind? Like right. what makes something kind versus unkind? I mean, I heard someone call in once because you said the statement <clears throat> that someone telling you, Jesus loves you is a hateful, rude statement. And someone called him yep. and they said, what do you mean by that for us? That mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. That's yeah. clearly a statement of love. How can that possibly be interpreted to be something bad? I mean, you're, and what is your response to that? <laughs> I, I always explain that like, you know, cause, cause you're absolutely right. They, they think <clears throat> that this is a welcoming, warm, loving, generous, you're including me now. You're what's wrong with telling somebody that they're loved. Honestly, like what could possibly be yeah. wrong with that? But first of all, like, they don't, they're not saying the whole thing. And so I hear the whole thing in my head. I'm coming from the outside looking in. You're saying half the statement. The whole statement is Jesus loves you so much that if you don't love him back, you will go to hell and burn forever. That's the whole statement. You just said the first little bit of it because the entire dogma here, the whole, the whole religion is the idea that we are born in sin. We are evil. We're wicked. We're diseased. We're sick. We're broken. We're twisted. We're these horrible creatures that just by virtue of being born deserve eternal torture. God being all just, all wise, all knowing is going to send us to hell to burn for eternity. And that is the best thing that could possibly happen. Nothing happens outside of his will. This whole thing is set up by his rules. He is a good God. He's a good, loving, kind, merciful. That means that this is the good thing that happens. The best thing that could possibly happen to you and me is that we're tortured for all eternity. However, if you accept this twisted version of love where it's conditional and you have to reciprocate it and do these specific things to receive it, then your disgusting, filthy ass can go live amongst the angels where you can then thank God and worship him all day long. And, and, and that's your whole existence. Forever. This it's is so... a threat. It's an insult. It's a twisted mockery of love. It is none of that is kind. That is a cruel and ruthless thing to say, to, especially to somebody who doesn't believe or someone who has been historically marginalized and ostracized by the church, like, say, a gay person. If you tell a gay person Jesus loves you, 
you're saying the only way that I don't think you need to burn forever is if you agree with me right now. And I just, I can't see how anybody would think that that's a kind, loving, like that's, that's a mad thing to say to somebody. Well, and like, yeah, even if, even if you take the, the burning in hell option off the table and just go like, no, but he wants you to come, to come here and be in his presence and live with him in the eternities in heaven forever. That's, he loves you so much. He wants you back, but it's like, but again, this conditional love that he has of in order to do that, you need to worship me. You need to yeah. be on your knees, bow your head, and <clears throat> beg me for the for the 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 privilege of getting to come and live with me forever. Otherwise, <clears throat> straight to hell with you. And I've yeah. heard you walk these very same people who come in with a very kind tone and a very calm demeanor, and walk them down the path of asking questions again. Do you, is there anyone in your life who you love immensely, yeah. unconditionally, with your whole heart? Yeah, yeah, there is. Is there anything that person could do that would make you want to send them to a place to be tortured forever? Mm-hmm. Is there anything At they could all. do that would? Do, <laughs> and every every bit. one of them, the answer is, and it's not even. It's so strange to me that they don't see also the breadcrumbs that you're like, we because people will just go like, no, like yeah. no, and it's well, like that's a that's a reasonable answer. Like yeah. nobody should think that. And it's like so then, and it's yeah. it's like their brains have this way of switching it to be like well there's something about eternal law and cosmic law that god understands mm-hmm. on a level that i don't but i've always been like why is suffering so necessary in this process like there's just Seriously. so much like necessary suffering that yeah. like that, that you just there has to there there has to be consequences for breaking these rules that are all insanely arbitrary and mm-hmm. that like have to do with the way that people were fundamentally designed like you were fundamentally designed to be uh attracted to to this person and because Mm -hmm. of that you know you're you're in this really weird unwinnable test and situation that and but you ask them the like would you do that to anyone that you love? Would you do that to yeah. a child of yours or a, a it, nephew it's, or a cousin? It's, it's, yeah. it's not like we're asking people to like learn the value of, 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 you know, life by going out and you'll go get a job, you know, go, go earn something, go, go struggle a little bit and, and, and work for something. You'll understand a little bit of what pain is so you can understand pleasure later. Like there has to be a balance. I get that. Why the fuck do we have like Guinea worm, you know? What's that all about? What what's leishmaniasis all about? These these microorganisms that melt the half of your face off. What what are those for? What's the the lesson that we're gaining from that? You know what I mean? There's there's one of my top ten favorite parasites, Entamoeba histolytica. It's a little amoeba, and if you get it in your if you swallow it, it burrows into the walls of your intestines, and you die from amoebic dysentery, which is where you did normal dysentery, you die of dehydration. Amoebic dysentery, also called uh, uh, visceral migraines, um, is where you die of exhaustion because you poop so much and so hard that your heart gives out. What is the moral life lesson to help us understand how to love God? What's that all about? What's the grand design here? Like, I just, I don't get it. And like, anytime anybody tries to rationalize you know, bone cancer in children or slavery or rape or murder uh, as these these things that are necessary for our, you know, in, our what do you say, our education, so to speak, as to God's love. Like, I I can't square that circle, dude. I just can't do it. I think Tracy Harris was another one on the Atheist Experience a little while ago. She was talking about, you know, child rape. And she said, do you think that's wrong? And the guy was like, yeah, of course. And she said, yeah. Would you stop somebody who is raping a child? They're like, yeah, They're like, right. I would too. That means we're better than God. Because if I saw someone raping a kid, I would stop them. And God says, you go ahead and finish, have fun. But later, I'm going to punish you for it unless you love me. And then I won't. <laughs> like, that's, that's the whole thing. And it really is that, it really is that, that basic. And I, and, and so many theists would say, well, that doesn't align with the way that I experience God and my personal mm-hmm. experience. You know, I, 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 that's not, but it's like, I know, but you don't really get to kind of pick and choose and, 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 and cherry pick the, the elements of the relationship that you have with this thing and this idea that, that work for you and that seem nice and leave everything else out. Like it doesn't exist because that you're not being intellectually honest in the conversation when you do that. And I do want to talk about some of the, like 
people who call into the show again this show that has existed for 20 years this show that is not you as you as you characterize properly is not you going around and knocking on people's doors it is two people sitting in a room mm -hmm. waiting for people to call in and theists yep. are volunteering to call into the show and say i would like to attempt to sway you and yep. you sit there and go by all means and people often call in very respectfully. Hi, Forrest. How are you guys? Thanks for having me on. You know, and like they they don't call in and oh fuck you guys and this fucking shit. Like they call in and they want to have a very reasonable discussion. And you're you're excellent. Your patience is excellent. Excellent. You're an excellent teacher. You're wonderful at Thanks. um at treating people with with respect and and respecting their ideas. It, I, I encourage everyone in the audience to go out and watch some of these clips with Forrest. But I also some of my favorite clips are when people cross the line for you and I see a switch flip for you where you go, Oh, I'm done. We're no longer, I'm not, I, I can't, I, I can't go down this path with you and I can't, I, I can no longer treat you in a way that like we're having a fair humane right. discussion. And one of my favorite clips, people should look it up on YouTube is the slavery guy. And it's a yeah. guy that calls in and just debates with you guys. And he's, he's keeping his, his head calm the entire time. And just tries to justify why slavery is okay and what and it makes men real men and it makes them strong and like yeah I remember and that I, dude and uh, I see you just you kind of like switch off in the and you change from being a science teacher to just kind of like leaning back and I think it's uh I can't remember who the other host is but that person sort of takes most of the conversation and every once in a while you just pipe in and go like fuck off dude like shut <laughs> like 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 because you're just like you're talking up because then you'll be like. Hey man, um, is there any context in which I should be able to own a person and do whatever I want with them? And the guy's like, well, hold on, hold on here. Cause he's talking about work too. He's talking about the value uh -huh. of work. Like everyone needs a job. Everyone yeah. needs work. Work, work is moral and it helps people. And it's like, we're not talking about a job here. We're not talking about W2 and health insurance. We're talking about owning a person as property and, and treating them, them. How, and beating them and treating them however they want. Is there any context in which that is moral or good? And he keeps trying to explain it. And, and again, like explaining it in a way where he's just like, I'm just telling you that it's, I think uh, my reading of this. And it's like, he's talking about something objectively heinous and evil, evil. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's yeah. the whole thing is like this, you know, and that's, there was that guy and there was one other one. It's I I don't have patience for fascists. And and if you're gonna sit here and talk about slavery as anything but evil, I'm not even gonna take the time because there's an idea, you know, when when you're doing, you know, when you're studying pedagogy, when you're thinking about education, um, you know, you find ways to connect to people and to bring them over to your side. Uh, there are certain people that uh like if they're already too far against you like if somebody tells you that you're not going to change their mind you need to believe them you don't waste your time um if someone is just completely against you you can either waste your time spending 25 minutes trying to bring this one person in and you will fail guaranteed because they already told you you would or you can push them further and the result for them is the same but everybody else listening might learn something um and that's how i feel about fascists uh they can change their mind on their own it's not my problem to change your mind uh, fuck you. And, and we're going to make sure that every, you are made example of for the rest of the class now. Um, and so when someone's calling in about that, yeah, that that's very much a switch in my, my thought process. I, I just don't have the patience for it. I, I I'm not going to engage with you in a, a pleasant conversation about the ins and outs of human rights. I'm going to, you know, you either, you can respect this or we're not going to have a talk. And I think in that one particular one, that guy was talking about, well, what's wrong with, you know, love and, and eternal forgiveness and this and that. And, the, and that was the only response I had. That's nonsense, feel good words out of the mouth of someone who wants to fucking beat people who don't do what you say and work your land for you. Like, absolutely. Fuck you. No. <laughs> right. You can't just inject the word love and mm -hmm. and and compassion and kindness into a conversation where you're justifying slavery like and yeah. and, and that makes it all better it's not just yeah. like a you know and i think that that's what i want <clears throat> with this angle of talking i want more theists to understand is like just being a person who announces the message in a kind calm seemingly compassionate way does not make the message kind or compassionate or yeah. loving and <clears throat> also if you're a theist who who hears that and goes like, oh, geez, that makes my stomach turn. Someone working so hard to justify slavery. It's like, 
understand, especially if you're Christian, like understand that he's getting that from the book. It's not, yeah. he's not, he's not pulling that out of thin air. It's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Yep. And, and you don't Absolutely. get to just pretend like it's not. And if you want to say, Hey, that book is full of a lot of things that I think are problematic. Okay, cool. I appreciate the book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate the honesty and appreciate the self-reflection, but understand that like, that's, that's a starting point for a lot of why people are having these conversations. Um, a, a lot, lot of people, people say, you know, if you want to, if you want to become an atheist, just read the Bible. It'll, it'll, yeah. Yeah. It'll yeah. Oh, and I, I, and you also hear on that show too, that they'll be like, Hey, we've been doing the show for a long time. Uh, in our anecdotal experience, atheists tend to understand the Bible a lot better than, than believers do like believers call yep. in with cherry picked verses, but like we always, we, we've been doing it long enough that we've heard all of your, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, verses that you've gotten from apologetic sites and stuff. And we like for every verse that you have, I have a verse that contradicts that verse. Like, you know, yep. and <laughs> yeah. So what about the context? Um, right. uh, one of the things that people will call in for, or they'll, they'll say, and you hear this a lot too. And, and I, it's just like, how can you not, how can you not acknowledge just the wonder and the splendor and the beauty and like the, the testimony of your heart and the way that, that this is useful for people. So, mm -hmm. and, and you, and you do see this. And I, I wanted to ask you this. There's a guy that calls in. Um, there was a guy that I, I don't know if you remember, you, you talked to a lot of people, but I wrote this stuff down. There was a guy named Declan that called in and he was talking about how he went through a really rough patch in his life. And it was really dark. And Declan seems on this call just from, just from an armchair psychological standpoint, he seems to be a person who this is a constant struggle for him. And mm -hmm. it causes him a lot of psychological turmoil and angst and worry. And I, my heart felt for this man instantly as he was talking and saying like, you know, I went through a really dark phase where it, I, I didn't know if I was going to make it. And um, he had a father who was very uh, abusive and hard on him growing up. And then his dad started turning more to God and faith and his re relationship with his father was renewed and it brought him back into his faith. And his yeah. story was like, this really helped me and it helped reconnect me with my dad. And then you guys go on to, a, you know, and you hear him out and you explain things and he's, he's listening, he's really listening and he's really inquisitive and he's actually responding. And you almost hear that, like, as he's realizing that he doesn't have answers for a lot of the things that you're putting forward, it's like hurting him. Yeah. He's like, but he's like, but this important thing that's connected to me to my father and helped me reestablish this relationship and that's given me a reason to keep fighting and to keep living. I'm too open to new information and too willing to change my mind to to pretend like I don't understand what you guys are saying. Right. And right. I'm but I'm afraid of letting go of this thing that's been my lifeline. And and you could reasonably say, like, would it be better for Declan to just believe anyway? Would it be yeah. safer for him? Could could it, losing his faith be a dangerous thing for him? It's really hard in situations like that because, like, you know, when when you live without religion for a very long time, you grow in your capacity to handle grief and handle pain and handle disappointment and handle you know rejection and and handle and, and distance from loved ones and all these things. They shift for you. You have to have new tools in your toolbox because you can't have these, these you know, supernatural connections to these things anymore. So like, you know, my dad was a Catholic and uh, he always would tell me all the time, when I die, I'm just going to be right there on that cloud looking at you. You know, anytime you feel good, just look up and I'm right there. If you squint real hard, you can see me and those stuff. And like, I didn't believe it when he told me it then. But even still today, he's been dead for almost, like, probably 10 years now. Um, and even still today, there are times where I really wish he could see me doing something. He'd be so proud if he could see that I did this. And I, there's a little part of me that's like, oh, fuck. I, oh, right. You know what I mean? Like that it's, it's, cause it's so you told me when I was a kid. And like that's, that's, you know, this thing that it's, it's that connection that you wish you had. It's the same reason why I wanna, I wanna call, I still know his phone number. I wanna call him all the time. Still, and like it's just, it, I know I can't, but in that brief moment, you know what I mean? And so when you grow up with this as your worldview and you're now well into adulthood and these are the only tools you have in your toolbox to now move into a position where I'm in, where I have totally different tools for grief. I have totally different ways of handling these things. Mm -hmm. And even with those totally different tools, I still occasionally will have some magical thought because that's how grief works for everybody. You know, you have some sort of magical thought sometimes. Um, yeah. 
that's fucking that's devastating. That's scary. I don't think that at the end of the day, it would be better for 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 Declan or for anybody to remain this way. But I can totally understand that this is going to be a very different deconstruction story with totally different level of compassion and empathy and patience and pain and all of these things going into it. Then say this, you know, Joe Schmo in college who just finally got a hold of a, a biology textbook and realized, oh, this actually doesn't work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a totally mm -hmm. different experience. So everybody's deconstruction is going to be different. And at the end of the day, I still stand by the idea that it is better to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. And that it's better to embrace a hard truth than a, a warm and comforting fable. I think that it's way better to live in cold, hard, objective, scary reality. Um, but I also, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that isn't a massive ask for a lot of people. And when I was growing up, I struggled with that a lot. I was never a, a Christian, but I had all sorts of magical beliefs growing up that comforted me and helped me. And it took me time to deconstruct them and get out of them. And who knows, maybe there's something today that I'm not even paying attention to. You know what I mean? That, that, yeah. that I'm going to find out later. I hope, I, I really hope that someday down the line, you know, whatever comes after Gen Z is going to scare the shit out of me and throw something at me that makes me question something about my societal impacts and things like that. And I can grow some more. Um, but yeah, that's that's just it's a very different story for everybody. And I think you're absolutely right. It's 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 painful and scary. I don't think it's a good thing for him to stay, but I do think it's a good thing for him to be patient with himself and give himself the same compassion that, you know, he would give anybody else in that situation to, to take time to grow. Yeah, that's a good reasonable response to that. Uh, do you have time to talk about like two more things? Sure. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, I was planning for at least 90 minutes. So as long as you want to go do. Okay, great. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is just really quickly, um, I, I guess to sort of give, uh, I should have done this earlier. I should have had this question earlier, but like just sort of like a, almost like a, a, a definer of like what atheism really is. Cause I think that people think that it's, an assertion of a belief claim or something like that when really it's sort of like the lack of a belief in a, a particular truth claim or mm. several truth claims for that matter. It's just sort of like, well, anything that I, you, cause people will say like, well, what is the evidence that you need? Don't you feel this stuff and have yeah. those, those experiences. And I'm like, I've had experiences. I mm -hmm. have experiences and I have, and I, I try to explain this to my, to, to people in my audience from time to time who will tell me that I'm agnostic for what I'm saying. And I'm like, no, I'm, I still identify as an atheist, but like, you know, I, I, um, I got sober through Alcoholics Anonymous and it was a thing that I had avoided forever because I was like, I don't want to do the God stuff. I don't want to pray. And I don't, it, and I thought that AA was an organization that was going to say like, you can't be here unless you admit that you believe in God. And yeah. that's just not how it works at all. Um, like what you're more being asked to do is just be like, will you be willing to just try something that doesn't make a lot of sense to you? Would you be willing to try it? Would you be willing to like try a prayer practice and like a meditative practice of like trying to connect to something that you don't fully understand? And I'm like, sure, why not? You say it's been working for you and I've been trying a lot of different things to get sober and nothing's been working. So I open myself up to this practice of trying to connect to something that I don't fully understand what it is. I come up with a conception of what it could be or how it could potentially work. And it works. Like I, I get sober and people, a lot of people would look at that and go, so how could you, how could you still be an atheist? Like God right, right. saved you. And it's like, first of all, no one in this organization is coming to me and being like, so do you get it now? That, that the Bible is true. Do you get, no one's ever asked me what my God is or how it works. I still believe it's a practical program. I still believe that like what I'm doing is energetically and intentionally connecting to something where, where every day I'm going, I am intent setting an intention for how I want my day to go. And I pray for opportunities to be of service. I pray for opportunities to learn and to grow and to be open. And what I'm more doing is like establishing in a meditative way, like how I want my day to go and that I want to my day to be divorced from self-pity and thinking just about myself and like, how can I be of service? How can I help people today? And stuff like that. And stuff like that, practically getting out of my own cycle of self-absorption and self-pity and, and, and self-focus helps me to have a more fulfilling day, which makes it easier for me to not want to have to numb out with drugs and alcohol and stuff like yeah. that. And there's a whole bunch of other ways that it's practical and that I see it. But also I'm like, whatever it is, 
whatever it is that I'm tapping into when I meditate or pray, whatever astral plane I might be accessing or whatever fourth or fifth dimensional powers I might be tapping into that maybe humans have some kind of energetic connection to that we have not yet been able to map, whatever it is, I don't know and no one does. And so mm -hmm. for someone to say like, clearly it's God, I'm like, well, sure. Or it could be that I live in a simulation and the simulation uh, is programmed to respond to people who pray and give them things to make to, that there is some it could be that that there is some uh, other d extra dimensional feature to human um, capability that we do not know how to see like the or that that type of magical thinking gave you the permission to like you gave your mind the permission to take that little leap into something that you didn't know you had the confidence or the ability to do and then it worked and now you built trust in yourself and you were a stronger person for having taken that for lack of a better word leap of faith and like th th there is doesn't need to be a causal agent behind it you did something incredible you brought yourself out of a shitty situation yeah. by the power of your own mind and your own intentions whatever you call that is fine but like just giving yourself that permission to do the thing and then having successfully done the thing isn't evidence for all of the other magical things you know what i mean exactly it's like it's not evidence that like the flood happened or that moses right. parted the red sea or that, and that's, like that's especially annoying to me when people do try to attack that on well you see now there's this god that does and it's like just like fucking bro I'm so, un like, seriously, just between you and me, I don't know if we should make this public, but I'm unbelievably impressed by that. That's, it, it's, it's an incredible story. And like, for someone to try to take that away from you and to strip that pride off of you and give it to something else, you have every reason to fucking fly a banner around when like fucking how an amazing thing you've done. And for someone to try to say that's not really your accomplishment, it sounds fucking shitty. You know what I mean? Like, that's awful. To, well, to, totally. And where I usually land is I'm just kind of like, whatever's going on, it, what and whatever people want to call it, I'm totally okay with that. And whatever they, and whatever's happening that's helping people, that's that, mm. that, so like this guy who said, like, it helped my relationship with my father. Whatever is going on that's helping, that's actually beneficial, yeah. that's I think a real is great. Thing. Yeah. And, then that, and that's real and whatever it is. And I'm like, and I don't know what it is. I have an idea of what it is. I call it my higher self. I think that whatever, I think that the thing people call God is actually an internal thing that everyone has access to that. Like you can tap into a version of yourself that understands truth and that under like, and that's that thing that recognizes like goodness and love and beauty. And that like sees a sunset and just sort of is moved by it. And is just sort of like odd by the wonder of light moving through the atmosphere at a certain angle, like that, yeah. whatever that is. And people call it God, but I'm like, I think every person has it and has access to it. And it's, it's in there. And I don't fully understand the mechanisms that make it work. And people, because I say, I don't fully understand it or I don't really know and I'm okay with not knowing they go, well, that's agnosticism. And I'm like, mm. no, agnosticism is more kind of going like kind of leaving it open. And I'm like, I still, I, I have a lack of belief in pretty in, in, in every God theory that I've heard. I don't accept it because there is no evidence. And I actually see evidence to see how every God story and God theory that I've heard from modern religions are harmful to people yeah. and are detrimental to society. So like, I actually am like anti-theistic in mm. that sense, but because I'm willing to allow spaces for things that I don't fully understand, because I can go like, we don't know really what, what, what's in a black hole. Like, I don't really, mm. we don't really understand what the fuck's going on there. And like, that like, I can admit that I don't know. People are like, oh, so you're agnostic. It's like, yeah, that's so I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like def defining terms for atheism versus agnosticism yeah. or anti-theism. It, <laughs> like, it is. It is a really frustrating practice to have to do because like there are there are definitions and they, they're out there like Gnosticism refers to knowledge. Atheism refers to just the, the God claim. So like. If you are a theist, you believe there's a God. If you're an atheist, you don't believe there's a God. If you're a Gnostic, then you know you have a, a you believe that you have strong knowledge. If you're an agnostic, you don't believe there's a strong knowledge. So you can be a Gnostic theist. I know there is a God. You can be a Gnostic atheist. I know there is not a God. You can be an agnostic theist. I'm pretty sure there's a God. I'm going to believe it. And you can be an agnostic atheist, which is what most atheists actually are. I just don't believe the thing. Um, 
And basically the, the rule, the, the analogy that I usually give that you've surely heard me give is, you know, if, if I say that there's something on the other side of this wall behind these bookshelves, there's an elephant standing here or something, mm. then you can say, yes, there is no, there isn't, or I don't believe you. And if you say, yes, there is, or no, there isn't, those are Gnosticism. You need evidence for that. But if you just say, I don't believe you, you're not making a truth statement. You're saying, prove it. If I tell you I had pizza last night, you could probably take it on faith, quote, quote, to, to say, okay, yeah, sure, why not? You don't need a lot of evidence for that. But if you really wanted to know for sure, you're like, prove it to me. I could show you the receipt. I could show you the box. I could show you my greasy stained shirt, whatever it is you know, that, that you need to see to show that I had some pizza last night. If I told you that I can fart my way to Mars, then you're going to need more than just like, oh, well, here's my, you know, my crap stained pants. Look, see, it proves it. You know what I mean? Like there's, they, <laughs> look, my, need... my pants are full of shit. <laughs> It's incredible. How do you think I did that if I didn't that's, fart my way to that's Mars? That's a Mars worthy <laughs> amount of shit. And like, that's, but like to, to say that, you know, it, there's the old adage that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. So if you say, I don't believe you, you're not saying that didn't happen. You're saying, I'm waiting for you to prove it to me. Now, that being said, countless people are going to use the word agnosticism just to mean I'm kind of on the fence and I could go either way. And countless people are going to use the word atheism to mean for sure there's no such thing as a God. These terms, it's it's the same way as when we tried to, like, if, if we try to talk about socialism or, or something, like, this is a very broad term with a lot of historical connotations and a lot of different theoretical connotations. And it's this big thing that's going to, there's, you can't just say it's this exact, you know what I mean? It's the same thing with that. Uh, people are going to use it in different ways and it's going to mean different things and it's kind of weird. So it's not usually worth the time to try to define it really hard. But if you're having a serious conversation about it, then yeah, that's the actual line in the sand is that you have basically a Punnett square of belief and knowledge. And we're on the, I don't believe you and I'm not claiming to know anything side, which is the default position for every single claim ever, forever. That's where you should land on everything until you get solid evidence for it. I, I completely agree. And I also like will go a step further to because because I feel like even then it's like I'm saying like, yeah, could be could could be sure. Like, but you, you you're making an extraordinary claim. I'm going to need extraordinary evidence to support the claim and all of the things that are wrapped up in that claim. There are so many claims mm -hmm. when it comes to each version of God and all of the different things that that God has done, all the different miracles. Like I'm going to need to see evidence for every, all of it, not just. Yeah, well, I've, I've brought you evidence. Look, I brought back a piece of a cloud from heaven. I'm holding it. Right. I have it. Wow. We can analyze it that it is heaven matter. And it's like, okay, I still don't know which God's heaven this is. I mm -hmm. and, and then once I know which God's heaven it is, I still need, I, there's still all of the other truth claims yeah. that are like, we still yeah, need so, to be able to. So many people call me and they're like, they, they want to say, oh, I can prove Jesus existed. And I'm like, radical. What else? You've got all your work cut out for you. Prove that he's the son, prove that there's a God for him to be the son of, prove that he is the son of that God, prove that he healed the sick, prove that he, he, he you know, made the blind man see, prove that he walked on water, prove that he raised from the dead, prove that that matters. Every single part of this is a different story, is a different thing that needs to be assessed. So like, and then it, I can it, prove to you that George Washington existed. I can't prove to you that George Washington built a rocket ship. You know what I mean? It's just, that's, that's a totally different claim. Yeah. And I also often land at the place too, where I'm like, I'm like, as a person who's atheistic, a, an atheist who prays, I do pray. I pray and I meditate and I believe that I'm I'm doing something energetically that I've convinced myself helps. And it and it sure. does. And it does. And it works. Um, but like what and when people I, there's a lot of theists that would be like, why can't you just say it? Why can't you just mm -hmm. say that, that that's God? And I'm like because that's an extraordinary leap to make from saying yeah. this thing has a practical effect in my life that helps me stay sober and helps me live a more fulfilling life and helps me stay rooted in service and like and to say the god of the old testament is the creator of the universe that's a massive logical leap and the, the other thing that i always go to is like if you were able to prove to me definitively that that god were real it's still a person i would not want to worship it's yeah, still it, it, it's still absolutely. an entity that i want nothing to do with that's it's, that's the hugest yeah. thing because yeah. like, you're right you know people tend to assume that you know from from belief to prayer to jesus or whatever is this hop skip and a jump which is right there but it's it's not you know i pulled the trigger and so the gun fired it's i pulled the trigger and also therefore godzilla is real you know it's it's a huge right. difference um and also you know the biggest thing i think the last thing you said there is the most difficult thing for me to get across to people is 
you I would be the first one to admit it. If you could show me evidence of this God, I would be the first one out here saying, wow, it turns out I was wrong this whole time. There is this thing called God and here's all the things that it does. Also, fuck that dude. I don't want anything to do with a God that would make a world like this. Um, that would allow this much suffering, this much misery, this much pain to exist in the world. Like I, I couldn't imagine. Um, and also neither could you like any, I've never talked to a theist who, who defends God, uh, for all the suffering and all the pain and all the evil and all the terror in the world. Um, and then would also say that if I did any one of those things, that it would be okay. You know what I mean? I actually, I had a guy on a little while. It was another caller. I don't remember his name, but, um, it was this young kid and he was talking about, you know, God's all perfect and God's all knowing is this, 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 and this, and this, he had all the omnis in the world. Um, and I, I was trying to explain, no, I think this is evil. If what you're saying is true, it's evil. Do you understand? Like, and, and he said, well, no, but if I say it's evil, then I will go to hell. So I can't say that you see, you understand? and like, he kept like, we got to this point where it really was just, I can't admit that. And I, I have to say he's perfect. And I said, okay, but just, just for you and me, I'm not asking you to, to say that God's evil. I understand you can't say that. But just for a minute, imagine that I am all powerful. I have all the same powers of your God. And I have done every single thing that you believe your God has done, except the one condition is I can't hurt you. What would you say about me? And he said, oh, yeah, no, you're a monster. And I said, good. I agree. <laughs> He's absolutely right. But I, then he went on immediately and said, but God is good. And I was like, fine. man, it's, <laughs> it's great when you can get them to engage in hypotheticals because a lot of them won't even go into the hypothetical because just like you said, they're terrified. Like the fear, yeah. the, the term God fearing is real. Like people who yes. are like, who are terrified of the wrath of their God, which again, I'm like, yes. not a great guy. Like, no. like you have this abusive relationship, like dad's home and I'm scared and let's, uh, let's all uh, hide absolutely. because he's a very scary person. And if dad knows that we were, even questioning, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, of, and we, and you always yeah. talk about how it's always a he and I, that it's bothers me he. too. Always like he. when I talk about God and, and it, my conception of it, I'm like, it's this amorphous, a gender thing, this energy yeah. that exists inside of people. It's like source energy. It's like the, or, the energy that expanded out from the big bang that's in all things. And therefore it's in you. Like Right. You are the universe. You are not extric- extricable from the universe. The universe and you are not two separate things. Absolutely like not. if an if an asteroid is part of the universe, so are you. And yep. and you are just as much a part of that picture from the James Webb Space Telescope as anything else in the pic. <laughs> like you are just as much of you know like. Uh, but so anyway. Um, but I think that this this goes into the last thing I want to talk about really quickly here, very well, which is like these people who. It, they're incapable of going down that road with you, even if they can see what you're saying. It's like, yeah. I can't though. I can't because I fear the wrath of God too much. And I I just cannot. I can't even, even if I can see that what you're saying technically makes sense, I can't go with you down that road. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of maybe an explanation for why this phenomenon that I want to talk about exists is like, you talked early on in this episode about a friend who's, teachers said don't read chapter four you know and it's like so which means that there are people who understand that there is information and evidence in chapter four that disproves their belief system and their structure and they are instructing students not to look at it not to read it i was raised in a religion that told me which books to read and which books not to read which movies to see and which movies not to see so knowingly People in in an authoritative position in these organizations are telling you, don't look at that, though. And I and I thought about the guy, Matt Powell, too, who you've responded to. Matt Powell, who is this guy who loves to do, you know, theist disproves evolution and biology. Mm -hmm. And I saw you talking about how Matt Powell challenged you to a debate and you said, no problem, Matt, let's do it. But the condition that we're both going to have to agree to is that we publish the full debate in full unedited. Both of us publish the entire thing. And mm-hmm. if you can agree to that, then we can have a debate. And he ghosted you after that yep. because Matt Powell understands that without editing the context of the conversation, he can't win a debate with yep. you. And the fact that he understands that and still continues to speak from an authoritative place. I just like, what do you think is going on psychologically? Is it like, Because at some point it's like, wait, so do some of these people actively know that they're wrong and are intentionally misleading other people? Or is it linked to that same thing of just like, I'm so afraid of God that I I can't even deal with the evidence that I am aware of? In the case of people like Matt Powell specifically, 
I think that it's more that he knows, you know, he knows what his fans want and he's going to give them what they want and he's going to get money from that. And that's capitalistic. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the idea. It's, it's capitalism. It's fame. It's, you know, vanity, it's ego. Um, He's more interested in putting on a good show for his audience. And so like, he's going to edit this thing, chop it up and then put it out so he can say atheist gets owned and all the people go. Yeah. And like, that's, that's the, cause that's his job. He's an internet troll. Yeah. Um, And so, like, and it's the same thing with, you know, his, his puppet master, Kent Hovind. It's the exact same thing. He, he's been saying the same crap for decades. He's been proven wrong 10 billion times. He doesn't care that it's wrong. He cares that when he says it, he makes money and people come to his park and, and join his cult. And like that, that's what they care about. So there are people like that. I that, also, that, that thing think- is so scary and so insidious. The idea yeah. that there are, cause I look at Matt Powell. That's the only conclusion I can reach also is I'm like, mm. you, you seem to know that you're, yeah full of shit yeah. so anyway yeah and yeah, then keep going it, sorry it's hard and also yeah. in matt powell in specific like kent hovind is, is a businessman he's he's full of shit and he has a goal matt powell is also just full of hate and so like what he's doing he also knows that eventually if he says this enough someone will hate homosexuals as much as he does and that's that's his goal so it's, that's a whole other layer on there um but the uh the whole thing is that like you know, there, there absolutely are also on top of, you know, aside from people like that, there are people who either genuinely misunderstand the science. And so they're saying, don't read chapter four, because it will confuse you as it has confused me. And there are people, like you said, that are afraid if you read chapter four, then you might turn away from God and then you're going to burn forever. And I don't want that to happen to you because I love you. Um, and so it's a, a compassionate thing that they're trying to protect you from this idea, um, just as they are trying to protect themselves from this idea. And what that inevitably ends up with being is number one you know, you can hear this over and over is that, you know, people call and, and, and talk about evolution, talk about radiometric dating, talk about the edge of the earth. They have no idea what it is. And so, you know, when we talk about it, we're having two completely different conversations. And I'm like, I, there was one on talk even recently where I asked like, what is, cause he kept saying radiometric dating is bullshit. And like, what <laughs> is it? I saw this. I saw yeah. this. You were, explain it then. What is yeah, radiometric Jeff, dating? Couldn't do it. Of course. Yeah. And he's, well, I told you it's science fiction. Like, right. But what actually is it? Well, it's supposedly a star exploded and then you got uranium-238 and there's a half-life. What's a half-life? It's bullshit. I told you. It's like, dude, that's not an answer. Like, And so you get people like that who just, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, but they've been told that it's wrong so much that they think it's going to be as easy of a conversation as they've had with their pastor about it. Um, or you get people who are terrified to know. Uh, and, and and I'm here to help those people, all of those people. That's what I, I love... I mean, there, there are also like so many, but I also hate this. Uh, there are so many instances on that show where like you will lead someone down a path asking them questions or they'll say something and you'll just explain to them why it's wrong because you, you're speaking from a scientific authoritative place and you just hear like the, the, like the silence of their brain and so, like you hear their brains break. And what's frustrating is they always just move on to another thing they'll never yeah. go like okay good point i didn't realize that and um and yeah. and, and thank you for well what about this other thing now? Yeah, yeah yeah and it's like it's like no hold on hold on and yeah. uh, but then also the audacity to try to go toe to toe with you academically and spar with you on oh well radiometric dating yeah it's, it's a bunch of bullshit it's like okay but what is it can you actually just can you actually just explain what it is really quick and mm-hmm. sometimes you'll even get to a point where they'll go like well, I don't actually know all the specifics of it. And it's like, but you're making a claim that it's bullshit. Right. Well, it has to be because it goes against what's in the Bible. Great. Exactly, yeah. I mean, we've had a very active chat here on the live stream. And somebody said earlier, they said, uh, biology points to God, not to naturalism. Like, and I'm like, I, I, I wish I had a way to bring this person in and be like, do you know you're talking to an evolutionary biologist right now? I would love to hear your your evidence as to why biology points to God, not to naturalism. Right. And I'm 100 percent certain that you're going to say something from the Bible that you're going to yeah. like you're going to quote something from your magic book, <laughs> not realizing that we don't acknowledge that as an authoritative text and that you need to be able to back up why it is an authoritative text. And then when right. this evolutionary biologist explains to you how actual biology works, you'll be so far out of your depth academically that 
that there will be silence on the other end and you will most likely pivot and go into a what about. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is I don't ever want to come across as like, you know, I'm, I'm this super educated elitist, blah, blah, blah. you know, I'm, I'm a fucking master's. I'm a graduate student researcher in a master's program. I'm not the smartest dude in the world. There's a lot of shit that I don't know. But I'm doing it for just... you. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it for you that you're but even just smart. the, like the base. Oh, thank you very much. That means a lot to me, but like the, the, the basics of it, like, that's the thing is that when we, when we talk about these things, we are arguing at the very basic level and like at some, some point, sometime somebody will pick up a big word and they'll be like, ah, oh, well, you know, you, 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 I, I'm talking about abiogenesis. You can't explain homo chirality. You can, you can't break that. You, you, you don't have an abiog, you can't explain how that works. And yeah, no, we, we actually don't have a solid consistent abiotic factor for producing an enantiopure mixture of, of uh, amino acids. So that is kind of a thing that we're trying to figure out. Fun fact also, though, is that we know for sure that all the things that make amino acids are natural, and we know that the production of amino acids is a natural process, and we know that they form together in polypeptide chains in micro droplets of water by natural processes, and then we know that these polypeptides do the things that they do in our body by natural processes. So if, if this is the thing that we're talking about here, we have steps one, two, four, five, and six. And you're looking at step three and saying, but this is God for sure. And what I wonder is, number one, you know, go back 50 years. We didn't have any of those steps. So it was all God. And now we've found out all these things. So what are you going to do in 20 years when we do find out step three? What little pocket of ignorance are you have reserved for your God after that? Like, where are you going to put him next? And like, that's the thing is it, it, it's either the most fundamental basic thing or it's somebody who read the first page of whatever chemistry textbook and learned the thing that we don't know. And they're like, aha, this is it. You know what I mean? And it's just, that's the wonderful thing about science. The wonderful thing about learning science, the wonderful thing about study of being a scientist of practicing is that there's always questions and that's not scary. Every single time I answer a question, I get two more questions out of it. Every single time there's something more that I want to learn. The research that I'm doing right now, the point of the research I'm doing is to allow other people to answer big questions about human evolution that we don't know. And if I'm, I'm if my hypotheses are right, if what I'm doing right now works, it will cause 10 more questions to be asked about other environments that we thought we had figured out. Like we we would we would completely revise so much of the literature about what we thought we knew about paleoecology if what I'm doing works. The point of it is to learn more and to ask more and to question more and to be confused more so we can find more cool stuff out. And if you can find one little place where we don't know something or where you think we don't know something, then you should be excited to go be the scientist that learns how it works, not just say, that's magic, you can't tell me otherwise, and I don't need to think anymore. That sounds like hell. Fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. I, I saw someone call in once and ask you, they said, uh, Forrest, if I came from apes, then how can we still have apes? And I heard you go, yeah. before I answer this question, I need to ask you if you're being serious. Cause you were like, yeah, I just, yes. you're like I'll, I'll answer it. I'll, 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 I'll give you an answer, but I just need to tell me honestly, are you joking? Or are, and, mm. and the person was like, I'm not joking. Why, why are yeah. you like, okay, great. You're like, I just want just because I'm letting you know that like just that question alone shows you don't. And I'm not saying this to be rude. You are not aware of the first thing about how evolution works. Like yeah, you're not exactly. aware of the, 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 so we're getting to the very, very, very like fundamental definition of like what evolution is and how it works mm. to, to, to answer your question. Like, yeah. but, they, but people think that this is, this. It, it would be like me asking a Christian, you know, what country does God live in? If he made the, you know, it's like, that's not how anything that we're saying is supposed to be. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, so yeah, 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 just... yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's so much more stuff we could talk about, obviously. Um, and I, we talked about this before we started recording that, that one of the, th the things I love about doing podcasts is the opportunity to elucidate and really expand on an idea, but like, surely, surely I have believers or theists in my audience who listened to this entire conversation and went, you never talked about the one thing that I wish you would have talked about. <laughs> and it's like, we could, we could go on. I mean, there's, there are 20 years of episodes of the atheist experience. If you want right, to go back and listen, go, yeah. yeah, go back and, and watch on YouTube and listen and, and see if maybe the question gets addressed there. But I You've really got a really much have... better chance. If you want to talk to me, if you want to ask me a question about God, call into skeptic talk when I'm on, it's on, on Monday nights, uh, uh, 7 PM central, I think. Uh, and, uh, it's on a channel on the YouTube called the line. 
Um, I'm a host usually once a month or so, maybe twice. I just did an episode this uh, a couple of days ago with with the person I talked about at the beginning of the show, Guts of Given. Um, so, you know, if you see me on one of those episodes, that's a great opportunity to call and ask me questions. Because ACA shows get loaded real, like before we even start the show, we've got people in the queue. So like, you know, call in to that one if you want to get a hold of me. That would be a much easier way to talk to me. And where can everyone follow you on social media if they want to just watch your videos and be a, yeah. a new Forest Valkai fan? fan yeah you can go so you can find me on them internets all over the place i'm uh just go to valkylabs.com or you can find me on tiktok i'm renegade science teacher you can look up my name on here on youtube um i've got an awesome new series called the light of evolution which just explains basic evolutionary biology to that anybody can pick up and understand and episode four which will be the last episode actually comes out probably next week um if i can get it edited in time um and that is my favorite episode because it's going to talk about not only how evolution works, you know, but also how it ties you in to the rest of life on this planet and indeed to the rest of the universe around you. It's it's a, a really beautiful lesson that you can draw from evolutionary science. So I hope people check it out because I, I work really hard on that series and I like it a lot. And I want more people to see it. Fantastic. I would love I'd love to have you back on just to talk about evolution. Like oh, just dude, to talk anytime. about that. Yeah. Anytime. I mean, yeah. Be, we'll make there's yeah, so many great things that we could talk about. Um Forrest, thank you so much. For, Thank you for having me being so generous with your time and and your your knowledge and uh really really appreciate it it's always great talking with you thank you for being generous with your platform man i appreciate you having me on it was a ton of fun anytime you want to have me back just let me know Oh, of course. I I hope we'll have you back soon. Everybody, thank you for uh, being active in the chat and having a nice conversation and being with us and watching. Really, really appreciate it. Um that's it. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.